All of electromagnetic theory is built around Maxwell's equations, the four fundamental laws of electromagnetics. In an earlier module, we examined Maxwell's equations for the simplified case of static fields. In this module, we're going to look at the full equations, which have a few more terms than we've seen previously, and which are valid for analyzing time-varying scenarios. Let's take a few minutes to consider each equation in turn. This is Faraday's law for static fields, as we've seen it before. It says that the integral of e dot dl around a closed loop is equal to zero. The integral of e dot dl is voltage, so this is actually a statement of Kirchhoff's voltage law. The sum of all voltages around any loop is equal to zero. This law can also be stated in what is known as point form, where the curl of the electric field is equal to zero. These two equations are equivalent. They're just two different forms of Faraday's law for static fields. To make this equation valid for time-varying fields, we have to add an extra term. For the integral form, we have that the integral around a closed loop of e dot dl is equal to the negative time derivative of the integral of b dot ds. In other words, the sum of the voltages around a closed loop is equal to the rate of change of the total magnetic flux passing through that loop. Equivalently, in point form, Faraday's law is given like this. The curl of the electric field is equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic flux density. So in other words, a changing magnetic field will be accompanied by a curling electric field. Ampere's law for static fields is given here. The integral of h dot dl around a closed loop is equal to the integral of j dot ds over the surface enclosed by the loop. Or in other words, the integral of the magnetic field circling a current is equal to that current. This is where we found that a current is always surrounded by a magnetic field which circles the current in a right-handed direction. In point form, this equation is stated like this. The curl of the magnetic field is equal to the current density. In order to make this equation valid for time-varying fields, we have to add this term. So now, the integral of the magnetic field around a closed loop is equal to the total current passing through the surface enclosed by the loop, plus the time derivative of the electric flux through the loop. Equivalently, in the point form of Ampere's law, we have that the curl of the magnetic field is equal to the current density plus the time derivative of the electric flux density. The two remaining laws, Gauss's law and the solenoidal law, do not change when we add the possibility of time variance. They remain exactly as they were for static fields. So Gauss's law for static or time varying fields is here. The integral over a closed surface of d dot ds, or the total flux of the electric field through a closed surface, is equal to the volume integral of the charge density within the surface, or the total charge enclosed by the surface. In point form, this is the divergence of d is equal to the charge density. And the solenoidal law for static or time varying fields is here. The integral over a closed loop of b dot ds, which is the total flux of the magnetic field through a closed surface, is equal to zero. And as we discussed for statics, the reason for this is that there are no magnetic monopoles, so any closed surface necessarily contains exactly the same number of north poles as south poles, leading to zero net magnetic charge within the surface. In point form, this equation says that the divergence of the B field is zero. So these are the general case statements of Maxwell's equations in point form. And these are the general case statements of Maxwell's equations in integral form. Note that if the fields are static, the DDT terms go to zero, and these equations reduce to their static forms. Also note that in a source-free region, both rho v, the charge density, and j, the current density, go to zero, and the equations reduce to these source-free terms. In order to apply Maxwell's equations, we must also know the relationship between the B field and the H field, which are both manifestations of magnetism, and between the E field and the D field, which are both manifestations of electricity. The magnetic flux density B is equal to the magnetic permeability mu, convolved with the magnetic field H. Similarly, the electric flux density D is equal to the electric permittivity epsilon, convolved with the electric field E. Now, convolution is used here, rather than simple multiplication, 
because in the most general case, permeability and permittivity are both functions of frequency, as are the fields. However, it is common and usually valid to assume that the material properties are approximately constant and to treat them as constants. For the purposes of this class, we will make that assumption and use a simple multiplicative relationship rather than convolution. However, in case you're ever in a situation where you need particularly accurate results over a broad frequency range, or where the material properties are highly sensitive to frequency, it is important to be aware that this is an approximation, and like all approximations, it does eventually break down.